No? You were very quiet in the way, wasn't you? Aye. I just didn't feel much like talking, that's all. Seeing me's made you too happy for words, is that right? Aye, that's it. You know, give me a hand. So, uh, how long are you up for? Don't you remember? I told you on the phone. I'm going back the day after tomorrow. Aye, of course I remember. I'm sorry. Well, it's a shame you can't stay any longer. Wish I could. Well, I'll go up and see my mum now. Oh. When will I see you? Ah, uh, I don't know, Marion. I'm fairly busy today. All day? I'm afraid so. Tonight as well. Mm. Well, that's rotten. Aye. Aye, it is. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, then. Look, uh, I don't know about tomorrow either, Marion. Then I might not see you before I go back. <sighs> Looks that way, I. Well, maybe we'll have better luck next time I'm back. Oh, Archie. Fiona tells me you went to look at the roof of the Laughlin Croft. Uh, aye, I did. How bad is it? Well, it'll need wood, felt, slates, and then there's the labour cost, and that's always the biggest one nowadays. I see. Tell me, Archie, how much do you think Dougal contributed to the damage? <laughs> well, according to his mother, there was only one or two slates off when he started. And now? I don't know how anybody mending a roof could cause so much damage, unless he fell through it. Archie, I was wondering, uh, well, I was wondering if you might be able to repair it. <laughs> well, if I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to keep a roof in this place now, would I? <laughs> oh, but no, no, I've far too much to do here, Mrs. Kang. I mean, that croft could be a ruin by the time I got round to but it. But you might be able to let some of your work here wait for a day or two. Oh, no, I couldn't very well do that, Mrs. Cunningham. That would be neglecting my proper duties. I'd be willing to forgive you, Archie. Oh, besides, I mean, once I start doing people's roofs, that would just be the thin end of the wedge, wouldn't it? I mean, then it would be that... their, their piping and their Mrs. electricity. Archie, it would be the great... What on earth was that? <clears throat> Oh, James. I'm afraid I've knocked over Lorna's files again. Oh, Just let it be, Fiona, Minister. I'll pick it up. Uh, I'm afraid oh. I'm not too well organised and rather clumsy. I'm afraid you I'm are, Mr McPherson. I always seem to be getting in the way here. Yes, well, well, there just isn't room for both of us and all these papers in this office. Well, neither of us can really do our work properly. I I'm afraid the fault's mine, Lorna. I didn't think it would involve so many papers or take quite so long. Well, Scottish Life is a very prestigious oh. magazine, Mrs. Cunningham. Its contributors cannot afford to be slipshod in their research. Oh, you're quite oh, yes. right, Mr. McPherson. Yes. It would have been much better if I just let you take the papers you needed down to the manse I'll in the first that. place. Well, right. better late than never. Please, do just take away anything you need. That's very kind of you, Not Mrs. At all. Cunningham. I'm really sorry, I didn't say so before. Mm. I'm afraid I won't get much peace to work at the manse, either. Oh, I'm sure Mrs. Mack will stay out of your way if you tell her firmly enough. Oh, it's not Mrs. Mack that's the problem. No, it's the decorators. They're doing the place up at the moment. Uh, well, uh, at least I'll be able to get on with my work. <laughs> uh, then there's a matter of typing. But uh, perhaps I could bring the piece up here for you to type when it's finished. Uh, no, Minister, there's no need to do that. Now, you just sit there a minute, because I've got something for you. Do you know what he's talking about? No, uh, but that's not uncommon. Uh, coffee! Yeah. Yeah. There now, that is for you. What is it? It's a typewriter, Lorna. Well, that's not just a typewriter, Minister. That is a Smith Premier Vintage Portable Typewriter. Now, that was made in the days when craftsmen were craftsmen and things were made to last. Uh, this one certainly seems to have lasted. I found it up in the attic when I was getting your papers. I was going to throw it out and then I thought, well, no. If you keep a thing long enough, you're sure to find a use for it. It should be very useful. It's been kept long enough. I don't know. What's that where the pound sign ought to be? Hmm? I think it's rupees. See, Marion's here. I did bring her over in the boat. She said you were too busy to see her. 
couldn't think what else to say. You could have told her the truth. I wanted to tell her the truth. I just couldn't, all right? Look, I like her too much, Eddie. I don't want to hurt her, you know. She's going to be a lot more hurt if she finds out from somebody else. Oh, Jimmy, the longer you leave it, the worse it's going to be for both of you. I know that. Face up to it. Oh, that's easier said than done, and you should know it, Eddie. She may as well take her home. Is her mother there? Yes. She must have had a hairy fit. She did. First thing she did was order me out of the house. Then Sheila said if I went, she went too. We had hysterics for a wee while. Then Sheila made a cup of tea. And? Was it all sweetness and light then after you had a cup of tea? No. But she stopped screaming at me, and I got out in one piece. Be a lot easier the next time. Next time? Is this you and Sheila getting together then? No, I wouldn't say that. But we're friends now. It's not been easy. Started the wrong way round. But it's so much bitterness to get over. Hope Marion and me can stay friends. Maybe if you were honest with her, you could. Look, Eddie, I will tell her, all right? Just know this time. I'm so mixed up myself, I wouldn't be able to get it straight. Maybe I should just write her a letter. Oh, Jimmy, you know better than that. You've got to do it face to face. It's the only way. I've been trying to think of some way to get Dougal Laughlin's roof repaired and still save your face. It's the estate money that needs to be saved, not my face. Well, I thought I'd found a way of saving both for a moment. Oh, how was that? I suggested to Archie that he might repair the roof. <laughs> he wasn't very keen. <laughs> when was Archie ever keen to do anything? <laughs> he was within his rights. And I do need Dougal back at the deer farm. Yes, well, you're surely not going to give in to him. By having his roof repaired? Yes. I wouldn't be giving in. Look, I've no quarrel with Dougal. The trouble is between you and him, and whatever you intended, it's certainly done nothing to improve the efficiency of the estate. And I'm sure your father isn't finding this conversation very entertaining. Oh, look, I don't mind listening, but I refuse to judge. I'm sorry. <sighs> Are we going to have the pleasure of Sarah's company before you go back, or is she still busy? Yeah, I'm afraid she's uh, pretty busy. Yeah. Such What's a this I hear about can't... some sort of uh, boundary dispute? <laughs> that hardly worth calling a dispute. The new manager at Letter Fallach has got it into his head that a lock that we've stocked is on their land. <laughs> I don't know how he got the idea. You'll just have to get rid of it the same way. Are you sure he's wrong? I'm certain. That land has been ours as long as anyone can remember. Oh, well, I'll just make quite sure. Peter, you're on holiday. <laughs> I only have to interrupt it long enough to make one phone call and someone in the office can sort the matter out. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing in letting you use the hall as your private office, Mr. McPherson. It's establishing a precedent, you know. A charitable one, Mrs. Mack. Mm -hmm. Faith, hope and charity are still the great Christian virtues. Well, I only hope you don't turn out to be too much of a nuisance here, but I don't put much faith in it. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Mrs. Mack. The humorous way you treat other people's little peccadillos. Oh. And just how long am I going to have to put up with us? Rubbish lying about my hall. Well, little the painters have finished in the manse, then I'll move these important documents to my study. Mm, well, I don't see why you're going to all this trouble anyway. My dear lady, I know you have not read my little article in Church and Nation, mm. but those who have have discerned that I have some small yet undiscovered talent. Mm -hmm. It is not for us to hide our talents under a bushel. Under this magazine you're doing it for, P. He does, and uh, rather well, I believe. In that case, I really ought to charge you for the use of the hall. Morning. Yes. Oh. And, uh, 
How's the magnum opus coming on, Minister? The scale of the work hardly justifies the term magnum, Mr. Murdoch, but it's uh, coming along rather well, if slowly. Uh, please be careful. These documents are in my trust, and some of them are very old and very fragile. I can see that. <clears throat> uh, when you come to the bit about Glendarroch today, You'll uh, no doubt remember the great name it has throughout the world for the sheepdogs bred and trained here. Of course I will. And you'll remember too that the name Murdoch is synonymous with the cream of Glendarroch bred dogs. I assure you I won't overlook that, Mr Murdoch. You know me too well to think I'm looking for free publicity or anything of that sort. Naturally, Mr Murdoch, naturally. It's just that my dogs have brought more honour and esteem to this parish than anything else I can think of. I'll see that it does not go unrecorded. What on earth is this supposed to be? It's a map, Mrs. Mac. Well, anybody can see that. Here. It's Glen Darroch, isn't it? It is. And uh, it's dated 1625. I believe I've found something of the utmost importance. What's happening about letter Fallock then? Oh, I, I got through to the office and they said they're going to bring him back and uh, let me know how things stood. It's strange that there's any doubt after all this time. Yeah. Here you go. Here we go. Good girl. Hey. Leg weary? Not a bit of it. I just thought I'd stop to admire the view for a minute or uh, maybe half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you're an old fraud. Yeah. Well, we've passed lots of nice reviews in this, and you didn't pay them a blind bit of attention. Well, that's all that lovely decadent town living I've been doing. <laughs> I think you could live here now. Oh, I'd love to. For about a month in the year. And then I'd go crazy to get back to the town. I mean, that's where I feel I really belong. You never gave it a real try, did you? What, commuting from here? I didn't have to. I always knew it wasn't for me. I wonder if it wouldn't have been better to have told your mother about Sarah and me. I didn't think so. Not yet, anyway. Well, she gave me a very old-fashioned look when I led the conversation away from Sarah this morning. She looks at everyone like that these days, especially me. You two don't seem to be getting on too well just now. I want to see a change in the way things are run in her precious estate. She resents that. Changes that might save this place in the long run. It's her estate. Yes, but I'll inherit it one day. Dad, I don't want to be left with a, a run-down debt-ridden estate the way she was. I end up having to sell it to foreigners like she did. But she got it back? <laughs> By pure luck, it wasn't anything Mum did. <laughs> you can be a tough cookie when you like. I've seen you in court. You can be tough too when you want to be. Oh. So can Mum. Only trouble is, Mum tends to be tough with all the wrong people about all the wrong things. Oh, hello, Minister. It can't be the minutes you're typing. We haven't even had the meeting yet. Uh, meeting? Oh, the lifeboat committee meeting. You know, I'm so engrossed in my work that I'd forgotten all about it. Oh, well, that's dedication for you. I am rather steeped in the work at the moment. Uh, no, actually, Minister, I meant dedication to the lifeboat fund committee. Oh. You mean, oh, I've never stopped that. Oh, look at that now. They don't make them like that anymore. I'm sure every typist in the country is glad of it. Well, Minister, what do you think of it? I'm afraid I'm rather missing the pound sign. Ah, that is a drawback. Still. When you get round to the bit about the perries in India, you'll be glad it's got repeated. Sorry, Mr. Murdoch. <laughs> Sorry if I'm late. Ah, I'm Come in. Sorry, Minister. Yeah. After you. Yeah. Well, 
Can we start the meeting now? Uh, well, well, we'll no bother with who's apologised for their absence or who's apologised for their presence. We'll get down to what's really important, eh? How much did we make from the Shinty match? You mean you want to start with the Treasurer's report? No, just tell us how much we made. <laughs> As Treasurer, I'm happy to report that we made uh, 75 pounds oh, from the yes. Shinty match, which, with Mr. Watson's contribution, will be 150 pounds. Excellent. Very brilliant. good. Now I've got to think what we're going to do next. Mm. Isn't it about time we had a raffle? hesitate to adopt any idea that smacked so much of gambling. Yeah, why don't we just raffle Mr. Mando? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can always find another treasurer if my word is to carry no weight, but you'd better warn them it's no easy task. I would have hesitated to take it on myself if I'd known it was going to be such a marathon. Arthur, you're a genius. A genius, Mr. Mingus? Definitely. A Glen Darach marathon, just like the one they have in Glasgow. Mm. We'll get folk to sponsor folk, like we did with the swim. I don't think it'll be much of a marathon, running from one end of Glen Darach to the other. No, that's true. I've got to agree with you, Mr. Murdoch. Mind you, if we had it from something like uh, the games field up Glen Darach and back there... Aye, we could get nearly everybody in the village to take part. I think a number of people would be somewhat elderly for that. Aye, well, not everybody need to go the whole distance. We can handicap people according to their age. Oh, come on. In that case, Mrs. Mack would get to start 100 yards from the winning post. That <laughs> is very ungallant. Arthur is quite right, James. We're more like 50 yards. What can the A surprise party, eh? It'll be the first one of those I've been to. Not supposing I'm invited, of course. We'll have to suppose that. Uh, the surprise is the party's going to be teetotal. You know, uh, if we ask all the people you've mentioned, Bob, we'll get them all round the table. We could always do it in shifts. Wouldn't it be better if you just had a buffet? I've been to a few of them in railway stations. I wouldn't recommend them. She means a place where you eat standing up. And I could make canapes. Aye, and that could keep the rain off while you're standing up. Oh, he knows fine what they are, Lily. Yes, that would be lovely. Oh, they always went well at the Caledonian Society part. I mean, they look very attractive. Oh, they're they do such that. fun to but make it. Ah, hi, Diggle. Come in. Yeah, I feel like a refugee. <laughs> Mother and Morag are doing the Worcester wedding invitations again. More in hope than expectation. It gets bigger all the time. They keep thinking of folk they don't know who'll be insulted if they don't get asked. <laughs> What do you want? Not the pleasure of your company, that's for sure. I guess that, Mr. Snedden. What do you want? I want you to tell that water bill of yours to stop trespassing on Letterfellig land. I wasn't aware that he's ever trespassed on Letterfellig land. Did he not tell you about the wee talk we had the other day? He did, but that was on Glendarroch land. I beg to contradict you there, Mrs. Cunningham. The Norlock has always been on our land, Mr. Snedden, and everyone knows it. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and accept that you really believe that. But now that I've put you straight, there's no more excuses. So I expect you to see that there's an end of the trespass. I certainly won't tell Bob Taylor to stay away from the Norlock, if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. I don't want to slap an injunction on you over this. It makes for bad neighbours when people go to the law about everything. You'll stay away from the Norlock, or I may be forced to go to law. You know, I thought better of you than this. People around here, most of them anyway, have a good word for you. I wonder what they'd think if they found out you're the sort of person that tries to bluff other people into letting you have land you've no right to. I have every right to that land, Mr. Snedden. I'm having the matter checked. I will be able to prove it. You could be proved wrong. I won't be. No, but if, when you are, you'll have to admit that the lock and all the fish in it belong to us. Eddie? You're going down to the office? Aye, sure. I'll aye. walk you down then. Uh, you're not looking for Jimmy, are you? Well, who else would I be looking for? Just, uh, I don't think I'll be there. Oh, I'll just take a look anyway. Well, you'll be wasting your time. Got nothing else to do with it. 
Uh, he's, he's very busy just now. Yes, you told me that. But if he's busy, he's likely to be at the office, isn't he? Well, he, he could be out in the law. In which case, he'll be back within the hour. It's just not, it's not just the aqua sports that's keeping him busy, though. What else is there? Well, the, uh, there's the lifeboat fund committee. That's taken up an awful lot of his time. I don't think you'll mind me interrupting him for a minute or two. Uh, no, I don't suppose he will. You're behaving just like Jimmy did when I came over on the ferry. Am I? How's that? As if there's something you didn't want to tell me. Is there? Of course there isn't. Well, come on, I'll race you down to the jetty. No, you won't. After that shinty match we played, I don't think I'll ever run again. Oh. I just remembered that Jimmy's going to be up at Glendalough House all afternoon with Archie. Oh, well, we're almost there. We might see if he's at the office. Well, somebody's there. It sounds as if they're in a hurry. You know, you'll use up your car battery carrying on like that. <laughs> How are you? Thanks for trying it. 